the most brilliant presidents in American history, sixth president of the United States. In his book, Letters on Freemasonry, he exposed the Masonic sect. He said that it is a tool of Lucifer. And he said more. John Quincy Adams warned that Masonry ought forever to be abolished. It is wrong. It is a seed of evil, said the president, which can never produce any good. In my own book, Codex Magica, I noted that Robespierre, the butcher who cut off so many heads at the guillotine during the French Revolution, was a Freemason. Adam Weishaupt, Order of the Illuminati, founder, was a Freemason. Napoleon, who brought hundreds of thousands to battlefields to be slain, was a Freemason. Stalin, who according to Solzhenitsyn, the Nobel Prize winner, was a Freemason. And he killed up to 66 million Soviet citizens. Mussolini, the Italian dictator, was a Freemason. Truman, who exploded two atomic bombs and perhaps unnecessarily killed tens of thousands of Japanese, was a Freemason, as was Roosevelt. Ariel Sharon, called the Butcher of Lebanon, was a Freemason. Bill Clinton of Monica Lewinsky fame was a Freemason. Fidel Castro who tortured so many and put so many innocent people into jail cells in Cuba, a Freemason. I'm bad Ed. Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, yes, a Mason. Barack Obama, a Mason. And no doubt, the Antichrist himself will be a Freemason. Now, we see that Barack Obama is a Freemason. How did he become a member of a lodge? Who chose him? Is Freemasonry, in fact, a Jewish sect? Well, we have found out that is exactly the case. And again, we are faced with the mystery. We already know then, he's a Mason. He practices Jewish ritual, Jewish religion through Freemasonry. Yes, we're finding out a lot about Barack Obama. But we need to go backward in time to his roots, to his beginnings, to search the pages of histories for more about this man if he is to lead America into a communist realm or commonwealth. We need to look at Obama's American dream, his case for bigger government. We know that as a senator, he introduced legislation called the Global Poverty Act. It's already been passed by the House of Representatives. That would redistribute the wealth of middle class and other Americans to those of foreign lands. But let's go back to the time of the campaign in 2008 when he was running for president. And I'd like to introduce you to some of the leaders in major American cities of Obama's presidential campaign. We go to Houston, Texas first. The Obama campaign was conducted from a giant warehouse building. And here's the director. There she is sitting, working at the desk, calling people, reminding them to go out and vote for Barack Obama. You'll notice that she has a picture of Obama on her desk, a couple of them, in fact. And on her wall is hanging a flag of the United States, but more than that, a great poster and flag of Che Guevara, the Cuban revolutionary terrorist and murderer. That's right. This was found out during a visit by Fox Television News. Here's another campaign office of Barack Obama. Notice the person hard at work consulting on the campaign and behind her on the wall what is it yes the Cuban communist flag and the image of Che Guevara the Cuban revolutionary who died down in South America conducting what else a revolution and yet another campaign office and another poster of Che Guevara on a red background wearing his communist beret with a red star on it and what is next to him on the wall? Well, Barack Obama with his message of hope. What is that hope? For a regime led by a communist like Che Guevara? Obviously so. We look at some of the people that Barack Obama has appointed to high office. There's Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States. He says we must limit the rights of free speech on the Internet. In a communist and socialist dictatorship, of course, many people will be on the government dole. And as the Wall Street Journal has said in a recent article, the numbers on welfare under Obama have seen a sharp increase. CNN headline news, Glenn Beck, who is now with Fox News Network, said of Obama, quote, this guy really is a Marxist. 
across the nation in the year 2009, many people had what they call tea parties, demonstrations against the taxing and the socialist system that is being fostered by Barack Obama and his communist lieutenants. This man carried this poster with, of course, the Soviet hammer and sickle image and the image of Obama and the old saying that is attributed, right or wrong, to Vladimir Lenin and the communists, from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Newsweek, which seems to have had a love affair with Barack Obama, on its cover simply said, we are all socialists now. In his book, The Audacity of Hope, Thoughts on Reclaiming the American Dream, Barack Obama himself talked about a system which seems to be suspiciously socialist communist. But on the other hand, those who trust and believe in Obama say that is indeed our hope. Our hope? Communism? Could that be? Forward! On! Charge ahead! Says the Obama Brigade. We need change, read the posters, but some say, what kind of change? Revolution? The kind that Che Guevara and Fidel Castro offered? And then comes from the internet again, someone put out that same image, it keeps popping up everywhere, of Obama. But this time, rather than dream or hope, it says, obey. In the French Revolution, the Jewish Illuminist leaders said we must seize the moment, carpe diem. And what did Obama say during the campaign and since? We must seize the moment. This is our moment, said the Obama posters. Well, it seems that Barack won't leave us alone until we have a communist government, a socialist system. Well, Michelle Obama herself seemed to indicate that when she cried out in a campaign speech, if he is elected, Barack will never allow you to go back to your lives as usual. No wonder Time Magazine had this cover of Michelle Obama entitled The Meaning of Michelle. Is that the meaning of Michelle Obama? This is an interesting photo back in 1996 in the New Yorker magazine of Barack Obama looking very austere. His wife with her Afro-American liberation haircut sitting beside him. Pictures of Oriental religion on the wall behind. Look closely to Obama's right, on the table, do you see it? The totem, the idol of a hideous African horned devil god, a god of witchcraft. Is this the dark and sinister god of black liberation theology worshipped behind closed doors by Barack and Michelle Obama? In fact, there have been many rumors and stories of witchcraft in the White House, African tribal religion, Santeria. Remember that Hugo Chavez, the socialist president of Venezuela, called Obama his comrade. He says that Obama is more left-wing than any president he has ever known. In the state of Washington, they have erected, that's right, some Freemasons got together evidently, and they erected a statue of Vladimir Lenin in America, in Washington state. Vladimir Lenin had a deputy named Leon Trotsky. He came from New York. His real name was Leon Bronstein, but he became one of the biggest, bloodiest butchers in the history of the world as he and Stalin and Lenin led the communist revolution in Russia beginning in 1917. But he also said, Trotsky did in, in one of his books, that the communists would someday come to America, but not exactly the same way. He said, quote, we Bolsheviks, that's the communist, will bring the revolution to Europe as well as to America. It will come, wrote Trotsky, systematically, step by step. Is this also Obama's plan? In his book, The Audacity of Hope, Obama seemed to be at odds with the Constitution of the United States and with its founders, but he proclaimed that the founders of America's Constitution themselves disagreed about the meaning of the basic rights, such basic rights as freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Barack Obama claims that our founding fathers were not averse to ignoring these rights altogether. Is that true? Well, of course not. But Obama, in his book, The Audacity of Hope, says, it is unrealistic to believe that a judge, 200 years later, can somehow discern the original intent of the founders or ratifiers of the Constitution. He is saying, dear friends, that even our founding fathers often ignored the Constitution and its Bill of Rights 
Barack Obama is claiming that no judge now, 200 years later, can really know the original intent. Now, friends, our founders gave us nationalism. They gave us the United States of America, and we have shed a lot of blood to keep it that way. But Lenin, in his book on the Jewish question, page 17, says that Marxism is incompatible.